Hello and welcome to this low level JavaScript video where today we're going to be building a bit packer. Now you might ask yourself what a bit packer even is and uh, it's fine because I'm going to tell you uh, a bit packer is a tool that takes um, that takes data that uh, that might not use all of the bits that are actually used to encode it right so if you have a if you have a bunch of bytes for instance and you only use let's say six bits of each byte um, we can use a bit packer to actually take those those values and pack them into a, another buffer where we don't use like we don't leave any you know useless bits around and that can obviously save us some space and uh, yeah like we need a bit packer as a tool um, as the basis or kind of the mechanical basis for a bunch of like compression algorithms and on this channel in the next uh, few videos um, I actually want to do some co more compression exploration I've just finished up a couple of videos about compression and it's you know it's gotten me in the mood it's inspired me um, I just finished up two videos about the Koi image format the QOI format and uh, yeah that's a really beautifully simple format where a bunch of a handful of very simple techniques are used together kind of in this nice composable way uh, in a really simple way to actually really effectively compress images um, it's not like the world's best compression that's why the name is Koi right the quite okay image format uh, but it does a pretty good job and the kind of the trade-off it's made is it's a simple format. It's simple to write the encoder and it's simple to write the decoder. Um, and it's simple to employ it, for instance, on something like a microcontroller or, or where I think it was probably more likely designed for is uh, uh, the, the author, Dominic Sapolsky, does some kind of, uh, does some uh, demo scene kind of stuff. And, you know, in those kind of contexts, it's also a very useful thing to to just get good compression without having to blow up the size of your uh, your final uh, your final binary because you know you have to have the decoder in there right you have to actually have the the thing that unpacks the the compressed data so that's the idea let's just take a really really quick look at an example here um, I've got these five numbers right 63 45 22 1 and 5 and let's imagine we have them in an array or a or a UNA array or a buffer or something like that. And what we want to do is take those and get rid of these two zeros in the front. Because well, I mean, for some of these numbers, like the number one, you know, you've got seven zeros that are just doing nothing. They're not carrying their weight in the uh, in the encoding there. That that one is doing all the heavy lifting. Um, but for for a simple example. <clears throat> we could say, all right, we could get rid of all of those uh, two leading bits there and just pack all the rest of the information. And then we'd end up taking this where we have five bytes and we turn that into four bytes. Um, and notice that there are two bits left over at the end that aren't part of our data. They're actually just sort of, uh, yeah, they're not doing anything for us. Um, so we have two leftover bits. We don't care what the value is there, right? It's kind of undefined. It could be zero, it could be one. It doesn't really matter. Um, quite importantly to note is that with the bit packer, I don't only want it to be able to pack, say, take these values and make all of them six bits. Um, I want to be able to say that this value is six bits, this value is six bits, this one is only five bits, you know, I want to be able to do this kind of this kind of thing and the implication there obviously is that what well, you as the person who is encoding this data you actually need to know how you've packed the data in order to properly unpack it um, but yeah that is indeed uh, like I mentioned that has to happen in in some of the compression uh, some of the compression examples that I want to explore um, all right so I hope that's clear I kind of want to go uh, straight into it today, so let's not waste any any more time. And I'll try and uh, make sure the concepts are clear as we're going. First of all, I'm going to export a class that I'm going to call Bitpacker. Um, seems like a good start. Uh, the way I'm going to make design this API is um, 
I'm just going to make a class with um, static methods on it, and I'm going to export that, and that is going to be the uh, that's going to be the API. Um, now, you may or may not like that approach. Um, that's fine. On this channel, I've I try to keep it quite varied on how I build uh, APIs. I try to do all different things. I use classes. Sometimes I only build functional APIs. Um, sometimes I build immutable stuff. Sometimes I build mutable. It's all good. It's all kind of good to know and learn. So, um, uh, you know, don't worry about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the first um, the first method I'm going to put on this. Um, this first static method is going to be pack, right? That's going to be the most important method. And we're obviously going to take a series of values. Um, and values is going to be an array of something. And we could make that an array of number. Um, and then, like I said, we could, uh, we could supply a number of bits here, right? Like we could say, this is six bits and this is, these are all my values. Um, but as I mentioned before, I want to be able to have variable length bit encodings. So what I'm actually going to make is a um, another type here called bit descriptor, which is a, kind of a terrible name. Um, so we're going to have an array of bit descriptors. That's going to include both the value itself and the number of bits it should take up in the packing. And from all of this, we will return a uint a array, so like a buffer of bytes. Um, I might play around with that later on, like, you know, outside of this video, maybe instead of returning a UNA array, well, I'll probably always return a UNA array, but I might internally do some benchmarking and see if I can get better performance by using uh, kind of other representations and then just getting the, the byte array at the end, but we'll, we'll see about that. Um, so let's actually define this bit descriptor. Fundamentally, what this is going to be, right, is kind of a type of its own, where we have a value, which would be a number. Do that really often. And, uh, and a number of bits. Amazing. Yeah, third time. Third time's the charm. Um, it's going to be this, but I'm actually going to make this another class. <laughs> uh, because I want to do some validation on those values. So um, we're going to take in a value, which will be a number and a, uh, da, 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 a number of bits, which will also be a number. And we can perform some checks here, right? So we need both of these values to meet some conditions. Um, so in the value side, um, it needs to be greater than minus one. Uh, I'm going to say that the that we're not going to pack negative values because if we need to pack negative values, that means we need to turn them into their twos complement signed. Uh, um, well, their twos complement uh, equivalent as a u in, uh, as an unsigned number, um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a little bit annoying on the library side to do that. So I'm going to leave that to the user to come like have pre uh, pre like sort of. What's the word I'm looking for? To affix their signedness uh, before they come to the library. Uh, yeah, I think that's a fair a fair way of doing it. And um, yeah, the other thing is that this should be an integer, right? Uh, we're, we're not packing uh, floating point values here. We're just black, packing integers. Unfortunately, JavaScript and TypeScript don't make the distinction between uh, types of numbers. So um, yeah, we need to kind of do that check ourselves, but that's all right. It's kind of part for the course. Um, if those if those two conditions aren't met, let's just throw an error and say um, value must be uh, value must be greater than minus one. Well, let's say it must be an integer greater than minus one. Okay, we're going to have a similar uh, condition for the bits, but the bits. Um, they actually can't, you can't have zero bits. You can't say that something takes zero bits because that just doesn't make any sense, right? That you, then you just don't have this thing in there. So it has to be um, greater than zero and has to be an integer. So bits must be an integer greater than zero. And if we meet those two conditions, um, that's fine. This value equals value. 
list of bits. I'm hoping list of bits equals bits. Um, and we could just make a convenience method here <clears throat> from a string, which will take a value as a string. And then like we're assuming that that's a binary number encoded in a string because um, that might be a useful way to to get a number from this at some point. At some point. In order to do that, we need to validate that um, <clears throat> it is indeed a binary number. So I'm going to make a binary regular expression. And uh, yeah, so we're going to say that we need to match from the start of the string, either a zero or a one. Um, multiple times, but at least one. So that's the plus. If it was multiple times or zero, we'd use star, but we need to get at least one. So we use plus, and then uh, we want the end of the string. And that basically says that the entire string must be made of just a series of ones and zeros. So good, that should work. So if not um, binary regex.test our value string, then we'll just throw error saying um, value must be a binary string. And if that works, then we can actually just return a new bit descriptor um, where the value is going to be just like, we'll just pass that value out. Um, and the number of bits is, well, that's just the number of like the length of our string, right? Um, yeah, so that means that if they wanted to pass the number one, but wanted five bits, you could actually just do zero, 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 one, and that would that would get a five bit uh, valued one string. Nice. Um, obviously, there is a, there is a little bit of a limit here because of um, because of the fact that JavaScript's number type is um, like is also uh, internally a floating point number. You cannot use like like an arbitrary number of bits, right? That like uh, JavaScript kind of clocks out at, uh, what is it, like 53 bits or something like that, something like that. Um, there's a maximum safe integer uh, that you could possibly use, uh, beyond which if you added or added, tried to add one, you wouldn't get the net like one plus one, you'd get, either you'd get no change or you'd get plus some larger number than one. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and now we can do our pack here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and work out the number of bytes that we need for this UN8 array. Because unlike a regular array in JavaScript, um, a UN8 array needs to be initialized with a size. We need to say that this is this number of bytes. So for us to work that out, let's um, create a size there. And then let's just iterate through. Um, Instead of calling this values, let's call it uh, bit descriptors. Descriptors. So um, bit descript of bit descriptors. Um, size plus equals bit desk dot bits. That's simple enough. And then when we have the number of bits in the end, we can turn that into a number of bytes just by dividing it by eight because right, there's eight bits per byte. But um, that won't work in the case that uh, like we didn't have a multiple of eight, because obviously we're going to get a fractional number there, and that's not going to work. Um, probably, I'm actually not sure. I'm going to test this out. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. I think if uh, let's do new un8 array, uh, and we'll say that there are oh, un8 array. Like that, say it has 8.5, what's that going to do? Uh, it gives us eight. So that's not useful. We would want it to give us nine. So let's do it like this um, size equals size plus seven. Uh, and which is like, if you think about what we're doing there, right? Like if you had, if you were one bit over like a, like a multiple of eight, so you were like, you had some number of bytes plus one bit. Well, you still need plus one. You still need a whole extra byte for that. 
So if we add seven to that, like that's going to push us up to the the correct number of um, of bits, and that will get and like if we divide that number by eight, that's going to give us uh, the right number. Um, imagine, of course, then if you had two more bits like on top, and you added seven. Well, now you've kind of you've gone one step over, but we can actually kind of get around that by simply like truncating those bits or like the floating point kind of parts off, right? Rounding down. Because um, if we do that, we'll always end up in the right number. So if we start on the right number, right? We have a multiple of eight, we're adding seven bits. We're gonna divide by eight and then round down. We're gonna be on the right number. Um, if we have more, we're gonna, we're just gonna bump up to the next one. Okay, so we could just do divide by eight and then we could wrap that whole thing up in a math.floor, um, but a kind of nicer, more, you know, not a nicer, you should, this is the way you should do it if you're writing kind of just code in your day job um, and you want, you know, your stuff to be clear to everyone. Uh, but, you know, let's get a little bit, you know, fancy on here on low-level JavaScript. What we can do instead is we can do a right shift by three, which is equivalent to dividing by eight. Every time you do a right shift, you're effectively dividing the number in two and you're doing an integer division where things will round down. Um, so if you think about it, if you divide by two, three times, you end up dividing by eight. And so that does both our division and our truncation operation in one. It's kind of nice. Uh, so that gives us the number of bytes. So then we can create a uint eight array of that many bytes. And then in the end, we can return that buffer, right? Like, and then we're gonna do stuff in the middle. And uh, <laughs> the stuff that I'm gonna do in the middle is, um, is kind of weird. I'm gonna call a method that we haven't written yet, uh, a static method called pack into buffer. Um, and that will take the, both the values and the buffer. And uh, yeah, like the reason I'm gonna make two methods, right? I'm gonna make another static method here called uh, pack into buffer, which is gonna take, and this is not called values anymore. This is called bit descriptors. The reason I'm making a second um, method here is because the user of this library like the person who is actually choosing to pack their bits into this representation, um, if they're using a variable length bit encoding, it's very, very likely that they already know, like they might have already pre-calculated how many bits they need, right? Simply by the fact that they are handing us a big list of bit descriptors, it's very possible that they have already done this calculation somewhere along the line. Um, and if that's the case, um, we don't really want to burden them with having to do it again. So we're going to allow them uh, an API where they can just hand us a buffer that they've already allocated enough uh, bytes for and uh, and their bit descriptors and we'll pack into that. Um, and if they use pack, well, they're going to let us do the calculation, but we can just write the logic once in this place, right? And it's fine because we're technically doing mutation here on this buffer, but right, it's a buffer we create here. So it's like local mutation, so it's all good. And the mutation that happens here on the user side, they're opting into. So all fine, all good, all legit. Uh, now, now we need to do the actual packing. So let's have a little think about this. Um, at the very least, we're gonna need an index. That's going to be our index into this buffer, right? We're going to write, you know, it's basically an array. It is an array, right? We're going to write into array indexes, indices. Uh, but we don't just need an, an index for the byte, right? We need an index for the bit because, yeah, we, we're going to be packing numbers that may be smaller than a byte, right? We might be packing four bit numbers. And obviously when you pack two four bit numbers together, you can get them in one byte, right? So they would share the same index. Um, but yeah, we need uh, like, in, for that reason, we need to keep track of the index. And the index is actually gonna start in this case at seven um, because uh, we're gonna pack the bits from left to right. Because, well, the reason we're gonna do that is because that's the least weird way of doing it. Um, we take our numbers, we pack them up from this way, and then 
like when like if you imagine this is like one uh pro i'm probably i'm flipped around right so it doesn't even go left to right but yeah i'm i'm miming this out left to right if this is one array index cell and we have to write nine bits into it we're going to write the bits like this and then the next bit is going to be here so there all the bits are actually together but this one is just in the next cell and if you were to write them from right to left instead that's kind of weird right because that means that your bits are going to be like this and then they're going to come to here right and then you're going to have your ninth bit over over here super weird um so that doesn't make sense that's why it starts at seven all right uh hope all this is clear and i hope i'm not over explaining the simple stuff um so for const bit disk of bit descriptors Yeah, we're going to iterate through all these descriptors and we're going to just pack the bits as we go. Um, now, we can take the value out of the bit descriptor. Desk dot value. And we can take the, the bits as well. And why don't we just do it like this? The bits. You know, I'm not going to call it bits because um, at least I'm not going to call it bits here. I'm, I'm going to call that V length, like value length. Um, and there is a reason for that. Well, the first one is like, if it's just bits, then like, if you're reading the code, it could look like bits is actually like the value. Um, so I want to avoid that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think this this is going to be slightly better. I might go in and rename these variables. Like I might call this value length later, but for now I'll leave it like as v length, and I'll I'll like symbolically rename it. Um, yeah, and the reason I've made these mutable variables is because there are two cases, right? There are two ways that we could end up having to pack the bits. The first and the simplest way is if when we get a bit description. Um, it is like, let's say six bits and like our index and our bit index basically says that we have enough uh, bits available in this index to write those bits, then we can just write them directly in. Um, that's the simple case. The complicated case or the slightly more complicated case is when like maybe we only have one bit left in this index, but we have to write five bits or six bits of a number. That means we need to write one bit into this index. Then we need to like increment the index, change the bit index back, and then write the following six bits into the next, the next, uh, uh, the next index. Yeah. So that's the more complicated case. Um, You could uh, you could write this in a way where you just um, do that in one case, but I think the code will be a little bit clearer for now if I do it in two. And um, yeah, we can always go back and change that. That is something you could change. <clears throat> so the simple case, let's have a think about like the number of bits that you can ever pack into a given index. Um, like. Let's say we're here, we're dealing with a byte array. We might later be dealing with different sized arrays, right? It could be a UN32 array. That's not for now, but um, the number of bits you can fit in a byte is obviously eight. And uh, like our index is just like one off, right? Because of zero indexing. So the number of bits that we can ever pack into a given, like our current index is always gonna be bit index plus one. So like if this is at two, for instance, that means that we have three bits available to pack into this index. So the simple case then is when V length is less than or equal to bit index plus one, because that just means like, hey, there, there are enough bits available for you to just write straight into this one. You don't need to think about crossing over the byte boundary. So this one's uh, the simple case. Okay. So how do we do this? Obviously what we're gonna be doing at some moment is like buffer index, and then we're gonna be like assigning some value into it. And for all we know, because we're dealing with bit indexes, for all we know is there is already some value in there. 
And so what we actually want to do is we want to or our value in, uh, which means like if there are already existing one bits in there, right? If, the, if it's like one zero, one zero, and then like we're writing into the bottom four bits, if we do an or, um, yeah, we're going to preserve those bits, right? So we're going to write our value in and those are going to stay the same. So that's, that's a nice, useful property. And the other property you kind of need to think about the process is because we're going left to right, anything that's in the left, we're never going to write there. We're only ever going to be writing at the lower bit indexes. So like we don't need to worry about kind of that side of things either. So obviously we can't just do this um, because let's have like a second think. <laughs> So let's say we've got a binary number and our binary number is like one zero one zero one zero one one zero 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 zero. All right, so we've got something like this. And what we want to do is like bring in like two bits here. And let's say the two bits we have are like one one. Well, what you notice is that if we do this, obviously we write into the bottom two bits, right? Because you just, we end up padding bits out in the front of this to all them together. So we need to shift these bits up into these bits. So simply writing the value isn't enough. The value needs to be shifted. And like the number of bits that we need to shift by, well, that is actually, uh, so it's the bit index, like, cause we need to shift up to the bit index. So bit index, but we also then need to subtract the length of the, the, like the number of bits that this is, right? The V length, because um, like if we were shifting up to here and this is bit index like zero, one, two, three, if we shift up to bit index three here, I'm gonna wrap these in parentheses because I'm not sure order of operations there. You'll notice it doesn't quite do what you might expect it to do. And that is because like, we've got two bits available already. We don't need to shift by two bits. We need to shift up by uh, three minus the two bits. Um, and then you'll notice you're off by one. So you need to plus one. And that's the that's actually kind of like this index plus one. Uh, you can think of it like that. So bit index minus V length plus one gets us to the right place. And so this is kind of not going to make sense until we come to the slightly more complex case. But what I'm actually going to do here is say that we need to mask this value as well to the number of bits. So we're going to create a mask and the mask is going to be constructed by taking a one bit, shifting it to the left by V length and then subtracting one. So let's just take a, like a visual look at what that does. If our V length is five, let's say, so we're gonna do one shift up by five. Well, if you do that, you end up with this. So you end up putting a, a one into kind of like the zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five. You put it into the fifth place, right? If you then subtract one from that, what you end up doing is creating a mask where you have five one bits uh, and you can end a number with that. And that's just going to take five, the bottom five bits of that number, right? The, like the five bits we're interested in. So that's going to be our mask. And then we can take our value and end it with the mask. Yeah, that is that. So then at this point, like we're kind of done with the current bit index, we need to subtract V length from it, right? Because we've we've just pushed V length number of bits into the into this index. So we need to move the bit index down. And then at that point, if bit index is now equal to negative one, that actually means that um, like if like because this is offset by one, right? It's bit seven points to the top bit, bit zero points to the the very first bit in the number. That means that if we go to minus one, that we've actually written all the bits in the number. So at that point, we can say bit index equals seven again. And then the index, uh, we can add to the index, right? Uh, 
because we're then we're now on the next bite. So that is the um, that's the simple case. Now let's imagine, right, that the number of bits that we need to pack, v length, is actually more than we we have available to us. So let's do an else. Um, now in this case, um, yeah, in this case things change a bit, and this is kind of why I've set this up with this mutable variable thing because in this case what we're going to want to do is we're going to kind of want to write as many bits as we can from our value and then we can actually just like mutate the length and we can come back up again we can kind of do a like a loop until we're done with this value um, and then kind of at the last place will be uh, will be in this simple case and then that will resolve our uh, that will kind of resolve our like our bit description value I hope that made a little bit of sense so kind of what we need is a while loop and the condition that we're kind of looping for over is like while v length is greater than zero right while we have bits that we need to pack we're going to do this loop so let's uh, shift all of this stuff up into there and yeah there's something to to consider here right this is not really the only condition that would force us to like stop this loop. It's actually a second condition or kind of two conditions. One of them is that um, the index that we're writing to, if that is now greater than or equal to the buffer dot byte length, we're also kind of done, right? We can't like we're we're not even like at that point we're not even like done then we need to just break out of the loop we're just like there are there are no more um there are no more places for us to write values in so at that point we could return is that the only condition maybe it is i'm just trying to think um for now i think that will take care of that for us so Okay, what's the next thing for us to do? Um, I'll leave this open so we can take a look at it if we need. Um, yeah, obviously we need to do a similar kind of thing, right? We still need to write into the we still need to write into the buffer at this index at least once. Um, but yeah, kind of how we're now gonna like the portion of the value that we are dealing with is going to be slightly different. So. Um, like the first thing is like how many bits can we pack um, the number of bits we can pack that's obviously uh, that's obviously bit index plus one um, yeah let's, let's just put it into a thing sorry bits to pack that's going to be bit index plus one and then we need, uh, again, we kind of need a mask, right? Um, so let's just take this actually. We need this mask and this isn't really gonna work anymore because this is the number of bits that we can pack, not V length. So we're gonna make a mask like this. It's the same thing, right? If it turns out we can only like pack three bits, we're just gonna generate a mask like this where we just have three bits. But now we need to shift this up um, to the right place because obviously we're, we're going to be trying to mask bits from the bottom of the number, but we're going to be packing, like we might not be taking that those bits from uh, the bottom of the number, if that makes sense. If that makes any sense. <laughs> we need to shift this up. Um, by basically like v length, right? Because we want, uh, let's say we take we have a five bit uh, value, and we need to take the top three bits. Well, then we would take our mask, right? That's our mask, and we shift it up by five. Um, but that's obviously too much for exactly the same reason that we talked about before in this case, right? Uh, 
because like uh, we need to account for the fact that we actually have a certain number of bits here that isn't just one. Um, so we kind of need to subtract uh, the three bits from that point, and that should get to the right uh, point in the number, right? We have five bits total, but we want those top three bits. So you can see we just subtract uh, bits to pack. Yeah, I'm realizing now that bits to pack might actually be a nice variable to just have um, at the beginning of this loop, like here. And then like basically this bit index plus one that we have here, like that is just bits to pack. So um, let's do it like this, bits to pack. Yeah, that's a little bit clearer, nice. I was thinking about doing that, but uh, thing, and then that's also nice here, it's clear. Um, okay, so we get this mask, this should work, I believe. And then, uh, yeah, so how do we then write into the buffer? So, like, we're gonna take value, and we're gonna end it with the mask. But the difference here is gonna be yeah, the difference here is going to be that, like, we're going to take that mask and we actually need to, like, we need to shift it down now by, uh, yeah, by this same value. And let's try and think about why that makes sense. I've used this um, uh, logical shift, by the way, here, like a ro logical right shift. I only learned about this uh, <laughs> like a couple of months ago or a month ago or something like that. Um, yeah, JavaScript has two shifts. One of them is done as a signed number and one of them is done as an unsigned number. And this is the kind of unsigned shift. So this just basically means that we're not going to get any kind of stray, like flipping around to a negative number uh, in an unexpected way. So that's why we use that. I don't think it's necessary at this point, but if we go to a 32-bit um, buffer, it might be. Um, yeah, so like, let's try and think about why this works. Um, this is kind of our mask. So let's just uh, let's call that mask. If we get a mask, it comes out to 28 as, a, as an actual number. Um, and let's say our value is, uh, da, 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 da. we have a fight, we've we're saying that we have a five bit uh, number. So let's say our number is like one, one, zero, one, zero, uh, which is 26. Um, so if we do uh, value and mask, you'll notice that we end up getting those top two bits isolated, right? But when we're packing them in, we uh, like we might not necessarily be packing these bits in those positions. We need to shift it to the right position. And the right position is kind of like um, the number of bits that we have, which is like five, minus the number of bits that we're packing, which is two. So if we then take this and shift it down by five minus two, well then what you can see is that we're putting them now in the right place, right? We like we only had two bits that we could pack and uh, they're going in the bottom, right? They must be the last two bits by definition. I hope that's clear and I hope I haven't over explained that because um, yeah, obviously like I've worked through this already before and I've, I've definitely got myself uh, confused on this stuff. So, you know, the over explaining is half for me uh, just to make sure I don't make mistakes and I'm probably making mistakes anyway. But uh, but yeah, the bit stuff, no matter how much I do it, I still uh, get confused about it. Okay, so in this case, we've now written our value in and we again need to, um, well, in this case, we know that we have, uh, like we know we're gonna be crossing into the next byte by definition, right, this is the place where you don't need necessarily to cross over a byte boundary. This is the place where you definitely do need to cross over a byte boundary. So we can actually say at this point that our bit index is gonna to go to seven, right, because we've crossed the byte boundary. We packed as many bits as we could. And our index is gonna be incremented. Um, 
that has to happen by uh yeah just like by necessity and uh this is kind of where the the magic of this whole thing is going to happen we can actually take v length and subtract from that um bits to pack and if you think about kind of what's going to happen here we're going to jump back up to the top of this while loop and like as long as we you know have a valid index to write into we're going to now have like some new number of bits that we can pack and maybe we can now pack those into the right space and yeah we've actually subtracted v length but value is still the same so when we get value we actually mask the number of bits that we can write by v length so we don't need to modify value and I think I set value to a let, so value can actually be const here. Um, and only the length of that, like the number of bits that we're saying we care about in that value, only that is actually changing. So I think this mechanism should be enough. Uh, it's very possible, right, that in the bit packer, we're actually writing bits that are like more than eight bits, right? We could be writing like, let's say a, uh, like a 20 bit value. In which case we would actually end up in this branch like more than once. So we would be writing the like, like even if we started at the beginning of a byte, we would have eight bytes that we could write, but that's not enough. So we would just write those four eight bytes, eight bits rather, another eight bits, and then we would have like some remaining bits which we we would come into this branch with. But I think this should actually take care of it. I'm I'm also fairly certain I've probably written at least one bug here. But um, let's try this out. Let's um, let's kind of uh, make an example here. So we're going to get something that's packed. To do that, we're going to get our bit packer. We're going to call the pack method, and we've got here our uh, pack method here. And obviously, we need to make a bunch of bit descriptors. We can use from string just to make our lives a bit easier. And let's do something like this, right? Um, the first number will make it 101. The second number will make it 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's then an 8-bit number. And then let's make uh, a number that's bigger than 8 bits, just for the fun of it. Just a single 0, 1, 1, 1. All right. So, this is kind of the values we're packing and the length of the, the bit length that we're using. Uh, so what this should look like in terms of um, like bytes, well, let's take all of our numbers together, put it all as one big byte string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a byte boundary. There's that. So what we should be looking at is something like this. This should be our first number, then we'll have our second number like this, um, third number and fourth. So let's like run this and try it out. So I'm gonna run this in the debugger, I think. Uh, get that, we get packed. Um, we get four bytes, so that's good. Um, they're not right, I can already see. <laughs> And we see if the first one is right. I don't think it is, but we have 182 one, and then 255, which means that all of these values are just all ones. So that's not correct. But um, let's go into the debug console and let's take a look at uh, packed uh, at zero and get that as a binary number. And let's take a look. So we have 101 one, and then we have uh one zero one one zero so definitely not correct um i mean probably worth checking i mean i'm just gonna put some breakpoints down but probably worth checking that actually uh that <laughs> like that this is working correctly like the bit descriptors um yeah let's just put a breakpoint down here refresh and in the bit descriptors, the first one is five bits. Uh, sorry, it's a value five with three bits. This eight with eight bits. Um, 10, 23 with 10 bits, zero with one bit. And well, so that looks good. 
let's see. The first time around, we're trying to pack three bits. So we should fall into the first branch. Value is five and the V length is three, should be three. Yep. So the V length, while that's greater than zero, if the index is greater than the buffer, the number of bits we can pack is eight. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That is the number of, it's not the number of bits to pack, it's the number of bits we can pack. But uh, yeah, I guess we took it from down here where that was more the meaning. So the mask then that we're gonna use, that should just be seven, which is just one, one, one in binary. And in this case, we should write those to the, the those to the top three bits. So if we look now at buffer at index zero, two string two, one zero one. So that part worked correctly. Uh, then we can take bit index, we can uh, subtract three. So that worked correctly. It's not minus one, so we don't need to do any of that. V length, ah, this is the problem. This is the problem here. Uh, v length needs to be like manually set in this branch to zero. That's kind of the slightly uglier part. I guess what we could do is put a break in here instead, which would be a little bit more um, kind of explicit about what's happening. Like setting it V length to zero is, maybe it's okay since, you know, supposedly the person is gonna be reading this condition and this and thinking of someone else reading my code at this point. Okay, so let's give that another go and um, I'm gonna optimistically kind of let it run through and see if we kind of got the expected um, output here. So I can't really tell from that. I mean, it certainly looks better. I see there's a 251 in there and that would make sense because we got a bunch of ones here. Let's, um, let's take packed. Let's spread packed out into a, uh, into a regular array and then we can map it, take each byte and do a two string, um, two string two and we'll pad that out, pad the star up to eight characters with zeros, which should you know give us byte values instead. Um, how's that looking? That looks about right to me, actually. Um, let's join all of that um, on new lines, and let's take that. And yeah, I think all things are kind of considered, but that should be about right. So that first line's looking good, second line, third line, and fourth. And obviously these were all like don't care bits um, because those just aren't part of our encoding and we get zeros there, which is the right thing. So that is actually perfect. And we have written the packer aspect of the bit packer. Um, great. What I would actually want to do um, and what I will do with this is, uh, and I'm not gonna do it on camera <laughs> because it's just, uh, I'm not gonna take the time for that now, but um, I would write a test at this point to to basically either take some known string or I would, uh, I would take a very high sampling of random bit strings and I would generate a large random bit string. I would then divide it up into into like byte values. I would create that as kind of like my uh, my expected output. And then what I would do is I would take the long bit string, just this other bit string that's or like, we've taken one copy and divided it up into eight and then take this copy and then randomly slice it up into all different, all different lengths of bits, create bit descriptors for each of those and then run that through the packer and then what we would expect is that the packer's output would be the same as kind of dividing everything up on the byte boundary because that's like we're, we're starting out with the bit string and then deriving like the input and the output from it. So as long as those two things match, that would be a good way of testing to make sure. And what I would probably do is like, you know, generate some super long string, which is like has some random variance in it. So it doesn't always lie on a byte boundary or, it you know, those kind of things. And I would run that like a bunch of times, like, you know, hundreds or thousands of times. 
and that would be my test case for that. And I think that would probably be pretty solid. Like uh, it would be pretty hard to, uh, you know, as long as you ran that enough times, it would be pretty hard to let something through the cracks there. Um, I actually want to write an unpacker for this as well. And I think I'm gonna leave that for another video. Um, and the unpacker, just to kind of get you uh, excited about the idea of it, what I actually want the API for that to kind of look like is going to be something a little bit more like this, right? It would be like bit uh, bitpacker dot unpack, maybe. Yeah, I might also make some sort of iterator based API for this. But what we would do is we would take unpack and we would give it a buffer and like let's say we would give it the packed buffer and we would also then give it a function that would be able to take a pattern of bits so we'll say the pattern is a string like a string of bits and we would somehow like match against known bit patterns you could do this any way you want right you've got a function so you could turn this back into a number and you could determine it through some numerical means or you could have like a switch case in here where you have like take the pattern like and you know in the case that you see like this pattern then you know um like well what we could do is we could either return like true like true or false that would be one really simple version of this api and that would basically say like hey like kind of cut cut the pattern there turn it back into a number and give it back to me and then you would have at the end of this like an array of um values um the other thing that you could do is uh instead of returning uh, like a true or false, what we could actually say is that we return like a user defined value, right? Like unpack could take a, like a generic argument and the generic argument would be like the return type of this function, right? So we'd be doing something like this. And um, then we could allow the user to like do the transformation on these bits themselves in place. Uh, which could be a nice way of doing it because then you're reading and transforming and like building up a new uh, array all at the same time. If you don't have a match on the pattern, you could return null or some other kind of like signifying value, but uh, but null is probably good enough. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's kind of what we'll get to next time. And I think I will actually end up building that as like something like this, like create unpack iterator. And so we have like iterator. And then what we would actually do is um, like, we could then have somewhere like a while loop, like while we're not done, um, like get a result from the iterator. And then, uh, yeah, and since we've already given it our pattern recognition thing, like all we need to do is like, you know, do this and then we would get our result. So I think I'll probably build uh, an API like that because that way, um, like it gives the user kind of the maximum amount of control because like if they just wanted to get the values out, they just wanted an array, they could easily do something like this, like values equals um, like, iterator like if you did this this would actually like fill this array with the iterator until it's complete um uh so that would be a possibility um but this also allows the user to write something more like this where there are well maybe they have like different conditions on when they're done um and maybe they want to provide like more exact error messages, like exactly where something happened. So you just want a bit more fine grained control of like stepping through the, the computation. So I think I'm going to go with an API like that. We'll get into that next time. Um, if you're still here with me at this point, I want to say a big thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, thank you to all the patrons of this channel. Uh, your support right, really means a lot. And um, yeah, if you're new here and you want to follow along, uh, please subscribe. And so then you will maybe see uh, the videos popping up in your subscription feed. That's it. Have a great day and I'll see you next.